Toby. Hey, Toby, what day is it? It's your birthday. Toby, you want to go for a walk? Do you know that it's your birthday? Do you know that it's your birthday? <laughs> Toby's four years old. Yeah, or he's a happy boy. He's four. Can you speak? Say happy birthday. <laughs> happy birthday to Toby. Happy birthday to you, Toby. Toby, you want to go for a rapture walk? Talk about the rapture. Let's go, come on. Let's go for a walk. All right, buddy, come on. It's your birthday walk. Front door open. It's your birthday. Happy birthday. See you, honey. Bye. Love you. Toby, happy birthday, buddy. Four years old. So they say one year for a dog is one year. Two years is... Then you add three. The third year, you add four. And then the fifth year, you add... Wait, I mean the fourth year, you add five. So let's see. He's one... And then the second year you add two, so that would make him three. And then the third year you add three, which would make him six. And then the fourth year you add four. Did I get that right? <laughs> yeah. So he's ten. He's a ten-year-old. Toby, you're ten, ten years old. What are you smelling? Look up and say hi to everybody. It's your birthday. Come here. Come here. Oh, Mopsy Bear guy. A little extra Toby time for the morning because it's his birthday. So, Hi, good morning. It's Justin Foy. We do rapture walk every day here. Every day. Go for a walk. Okay? Just one walk sometimes in your life. It's good to just go for a walk, is it not? And I take the camera out. And I preach. Now, there has been some literal impact when I go around the neighborhoods and I'm preaching. A lot of people say hi and they hear me yelling about Jesus. And, uh, you know, sometimes out of context, it's probably a little weird. But I see them again later, and I talk to them. So that's actually been pretty cool. And then, then we have a pretty sweet community going now with comments and emails and um, prayers for people. I am so happy. Thanks for everybody that's prayed for my family over the past couple years. And I've, dude, if you have an unction to pray, do it right then. That's where the power is, and you'll forget. You're, we're all kind of a stupid human, and so we'll forget. So do it right then. So if I read a comment and somebody's like, ah, I need prayer for this, boom, I'm doing it right away, right when I see it. Just so you know, that's how, that's where the power is. Pray right away. Unction to pray. Thank you, Jesus. So, yesterday, we did that post about um, I, October 3rd, 1.49, 1.59 p.m. Uh, Central Standard Time is where the sliver of the new moon will be found. And that's going to be the Feast of Trumpets. And the trumpet will blast. And then we'll have the rapture right then. Well... Good comments, good researchers said, actually, it's October 4th is what they expect to see the sliver of the new moon. And then one person said, well, you, you got to have daylight savings in there. So maybe it's, see, see, there's variables. And I want to just say, I never said God told me this. This is just like a simple math calculation of when the Feast of Trumpets takes place this year. I did not hear that from God. I'm, I interpret the rapture as happening on the Feast of Trumpets, okay? We've gone over that a million times. I interpret the rapture to happen this year. We've gone over that a million times, so we'll go over it again here real quick. But I'm just showing you the simple math that this is not God told me. It's very simple. I believe the rapture, number one, takes place on a feast of trumpets the seven feasts of god 
That's what God calls them, not the feasts of Israel. Okay, these are God's feasts. Passover, unleavened bread, first fruits, Pentecost, Feast of Trumpets, Atonement, and Tabernacles. Seven. Jesus fulfilled the first four on the exact day. So why wouldn't he fulfill the next three on the exact day? Right? Doesn't that make logical sense? I'm not saying he told me that. I'm just putting that out there. The next one to happen is the Feast of Trumpets. And there's a large gap in time between the Spring Feasts and the Fall Feast, which represents the Church Age. From Pentecost, when the Church, when the inception of the Church, and the baby's been growing this whole time and is about to be born out of Jesus' own body. Massive spider web. Oh, damn. Woo! I hope there's no giant spider on me. Oh, God. Oh! Giant spider! Did anybody see it? It's probably on the camera. And I don't see it. Oh, man. Oh. Jeez, I'm talking a huge... Yeah. Is there a spider on me? Oh, Lord. Woo. I'm not afraid of a lot of animals, but something about spiders. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just. Oh. Anybody see it? Wow. Freaking spider web. Huge one. Like, it felt like I was in Indiana Jones. In the cave. Like, ah. Man, nothing will throw you a curveball like walking into a spider web. Woo! So, plain and simple. Okay? I never said God told me. Now, some people, only a few, because this battle is pretty much dead. It's been totally debunked. The day or the hour, no one knows the day or the hour. That context is not talking about the rapture, first of all. It's talking about the end of all things when God rolls it all up and the elements burn and the end of the white throne judgment and everything's finished. No one knows the day or the hour of that. Now, if you want to put that in context to all of the eschatological aspects, all of the end times prophecy, no one knows. Well, your sis not true. Paul, Jesus says, you will know the season, first of all. We can know the season. And he even rebukes people for not knowing. And to watch. Second, Paul says that we are not of the night. That it'll take us like a thief. No, you are of the day. And it will not take you like a thief in the night. Do not forsake gathering together as you see the day approaching. The day. We see it approaching. We know that it's coming. So it's not... There's huge precedent, actually, in the New Testament that gives us clear understanding that we will know. And it will not take you like surprise. So, that's totally debunked, okay? And if you want to really get down to it, nobody knows the day or the hour. That's the idiom for the Feast of Trumpets because they don't know when the sliver of the new moon will appear, of the crescent on the new moon will appear. They have to watch. I'm a believer. God likes to give clues. And he wants you to research. And he wants you to try to figure it out. He didn't rebuke the disciples for asking him questions. When is it going to be? He gave them information. And Jesus is the kind of guy, he even explained to you what his, he's like. And when you see Jesus, you see the Father. The unjust judge and the 
the burdened widow who just every day bothered the can you please give me this i need this i need this i need this and every day the judge just ignored her and he, that woman bothered that judge every day until finally the unjust judge was like i've had enough of this woman sending letters knocking on my door sitting outside my courthouse fine here you can have it and who did god praise there the woman who nagged that man every single day and how much more loving is our father how much more you being evil he said you being evil how much would you give, if your son asked for food, would you give him a snake, asked for a fish, would you give him a snake? How much more, God the Father who loves you, will give you everything. So we can ask him. You take one verse out of context. Don't compare it to all the other verses that say you will know and you can know and you will not be in darkness and it'll be obvious to you. You'll know the season. And we go, Father, tell us. We want to understand. Anybody who rebukes that process, you don't know the Father. You view the Father as the unjust judge. You view God as being, you know, wrathful and unapproachable. You, you can go boldly to the, the throne of grace. Because when you enter prayer and you talk to God, He sees Jesus, not you. If you try to enter through the gate as you, well, yeah, then it's get in line. It's, no, you cannot. You don't have any righteousness. You don't have any clout in heaven. But if you enter in underneath the work of his son, well, you get right in. Come on in. Well, Lord, Father God, I want to know. Jesus, are you coming on this Feast of Trumpets? Please tell us. The simple math says... that in 2028, Israel will be 80 years old. And if they're going to get kicked out at the full 80, at 2028, that's three and a half years into the tribulation. When Satan goes, the Antichrist goes into the temple and the Jews have to flee. They'll have to flee the land. That's, that would be at 80 years old. If you minus the three and a half years before that, you get to 2024.5. I mean, we're so up against the clock on these literal interpretations that <sighs> we don't even really have much time for a gap in between the rapture and the rising of the Ten Kings, the reorganization of the world, and then the coming of the Antichrist. There's not much time. And yeah, I do believe in 2029, Apophis. Apophis, Apophos, Apophis, Apophis, <laughs> asteroid is going to hit the earth in 2029, and I believe that's wormwood. You should do your own research on this, but Tom Horn, who I have great respect for, You should research his dream, what he heard from the Lord. He shares it with Gary Stearman before Tom Horn died. He shares it with Gary Stearman on Prophecy Watchers and other interviews. But what the Lord told him, showed him, and then when he went and looked, he had no idea what Apophis is. Apophis. He had no idea. And then he went and looked, and it's like, oh my gosh, this is things even on NASA, NASA's radar. That it's going to be the closest meteor, and it's huge. 
to come to the earth of all time. And then they keep exposing that they're lying about how close it really is. And every time they get exposed on that, they make a little adjustment and say, yeah, it's going to be a little bit closer, a little bit closer. You don't know what's going to happen in four, four and a half, five years. That thing traveling, you can't predict. And there could be like a sudden impact that moves it. The magnetic draw is coming. And I believe that's wormwood and it'll strike the earth in 2029. So we're right up against it on these clock times here, ladies and gentlemen. But I did want to just first come out and say thank you for all the fun comments and prayers and people took it well. Like, yeah, awesome. It's a possible window where this interpretation could be fulfilled. I'm not, I, some people say you shouldn't set dates because it'll, if it doesn't happen, people will get sad and they might lose faith. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I mean, if that's you, what are you, aren't you, don't you, do you believe in Jesus or do you believe in a date? Like ultimately. Do you believe his promises are true? Yes, I do, they say. Yes, I do believe. I, but it's just I got my hopes up and now he's not here and now I have to... What are you talking about? His promises are still true whether our little tiny brains can calculate and try to understand this stuff as much as we can. It doesn't change. This is a really cool spot. There's a secret pasture and there's some cows over there so if if you're sad because there's a, some some guy like me and others who say hey we think it's feast of trumpets and here's why we think it's this year and here's why and if you calculate you know the expected time of when the sliver of the new moon hap crescent moon on the new moon happens at this time and it doesn't happen and then you lose faith in jesus I don't know if something's wrong with your faith in Jesus. Okay? So if that's you and that's happened to you and you're sad. I, I remember the Revelation 12 sign in uh, September 23rd, 2017. I remember feeling really like shook and let down. I do, because uh, I was the first time in my life that I'd ever considered, well, this is it. This is exactly the time. And, and yeah, the world got weird after that, though, remember? I mean, it, it's been getting weirder and weirder ever since for the past seven years. So, but I will say this. Because of the watching... Because of trying to understand pre-trib rapture, the concept of rapture, the return of Jesus Christ, the promises and the timing of it, because of that research and that prayer and that understanding and learning from Chuck Missler and Ken Johnson and Dr. Andy Woods and Barry Scarborough was a big deal for me back then. Bob Barber. L learning, watching and learning. Because of that, when 2020 came and the big evil agenda happened, we saw it a mile away. So because of this research, because of sharpening your eschatological eyes and understanding the end times and the prophecies, when the devil does some giant attack, it's like obvious. You cannot brainwash me. You can't do it because I'm already have focused on the return of Jesus Christ. And I already see the tribulation coming. I already see all the evil plans you're doing. So at the very least, the bonus of a watchman, somebody who's learning, watching, studying, researching, the bonus of that is, is you're not going to be tricked. All right. 
One thing I'll say this actually is an accusation against pre-trib rapture believers. There's one accusation that says, well, you're preaching a false doctrine and a false hope so that when the you say you can't be here when the Antichrist rises up. So when the Antichrist does rise up and he does offer the mark of the beast, you'll take it and say, we can't be here. So this can't be the Antichrist or the mark of the beast. You know, because if you're still here, then it can't be the Antichrist and it can't be the mark of the beast. So you'll end up taking it. I'll say this. Let me ask you this. Of the population of post-tribber and pre-tribber, what percentage took the jab? Huh? What percentage got brainwashed and is now massively brainwashed? What percentage said, trust the science? What percentage said, yeah, social distancing, put on a diaper on your face? What percentage? I guarantee you, the community that was post-trib, they all took the jab. We were the ones that cannot be brainwashed. And you misunderstand the entire concept of the restrainer. Who is the restrainer then in your mind, sir? Who is it? Who has the power to restrain the evil one? If it's not the Holy Spirit living in the body of believers, restraining evil in this world and restraining the coming of the Antichrist, and that the restrainer has to be taken out in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, the restrainer has to be taken out before the Antichrist is revealed. If it's not the Holy Spirit in the rapture, then post tribby pre preterist, amillennialist, non futurist, non hope believing Christian, who's the restrainer? Oh, they got all kinds of these crazy ideas. No, none of them can restrain Satan. It's not you. It's not governments of man. It's not Michael. Michael clearly said, I do not rebuke you, but the Lord rebuke you. He's not allowed to fight Satan right now. It's a bunch of crap. That's what it is. All right, now that we got that all out, <laughs> you got to preach it out loud and clear. It's Christmas every day until the rapture, and I believe the door is wide open for anybody who wants to come to Jesus. It's wide open right now. Oh, but when the rapture happens, the door closes, and you cannot go. That's another reason why people like me, and there's a lot of us out there on YouTube doing this, and just regular going to the grocery store or the library or meeting families at the kids' school, or your workplace, the bar, the coffee shop, wherever we tell people about this. Because we know that once the door closes, it's too late. So we're shouting it. There's not much time. Could I be wrong that it's this year? Yeah, of course. I don't take stock that heavily into my own thoughts. I have to give those to Jesus too. But I exercise my God-given right, my mind, my heart, my prayers. I exercise them. Every day on a rapture walk, I'm exercising it out. That's how you get smart. That's how you stay sharp. Okay. So, I suggest you do it too. And you know what's really lame is most of the time, yeah, occasionally you'll get a reply back. 
But you'll get the trolls that'll make a comment, post river style. And then you, you can even reply back sometimes and be like, well, what verse are you talking about? Wait a minute, that, that's out of context. What about all the promises that he's going to rescue us? What do you have to say about those? Nothing. Dead silence. Just one troll submission and move on. I think we're coming to the conclusion, which is sad as can be, but a lot of Christians, pre-trib Christians now, are coming to the conclusion that maybe all these people who are dead set on going through the tribulation, like maybe they are. Are you really a believer? Do you know the Father? Do you know that Jesus has, is your Savior and He's here to rescue you? Now, I'm going to fight against that a little bit. Because I believe just because if you're dumb or your theology is wrong, if you're hoping on Jesus to save your eternal soul, then you're going in the rapture. He doesn't lose one person, not one. So, I don't know. I don't, I, I, I'm not a universalist. You have to claim the name of Jesus to get into heaven. But I got the door way more wide open than other people. Like, there's a lot of people who were born Mormon or born Catholic, or born Jehovah Witness, or born Seventh-day Adventist, or born Quaker, or born Baptist, or born this, born that, and they know the traditions, but they believe. They accepted Jesus as their Savior. And then they get all this documentation, traditions, and powerful leaders to cultify their mind, brainwash them, and have them following the law. Look... What about on their, when they lay their head down on their pillow and they cry and they pray and they say, help me, Jesus? They're going to. Eschatology, theology, academia, knowing the ins and outs of all the being smart and having right thinking. It'll help you and bless you and then uh, establish you as a teacher or a preacher or a prophet or somebody who evangelizes. But it's not salvation itself. Having Bible smarts doesn't save you. What saves you is calling out to Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Okay? Yes, there's a benefit to it, and there's rewards in heaven for lots of great things that you've done in, in your life, or the smarts you have. But that's not what saves you. What saves you is Jesus' blood. So, there's a lot of brainwashed cultists out there, heretics, that still claim the name of Jesus, and you don't know in the shower, or on the bed, and the, when they're sick, and they're laying there, and they go, Jesus, help me. He doesn't turn people away because they have wrong thoughts. The, the disciples had no eschatology, no understanding of even the death and resurrection, even after he told them. They still didn't believe it. They still didn't understand it. They couldn't see it in their own Torah. And yet when Peter cried out, Lord, help me, he reached out and saved him from drowning in the water. So um, I think the door's wide open for anybody who claims the name of Jesus. Now, I'm not going to let some Mormon or Jehovah Witness in my house and try to debate me on something because they're using material that's satanic. And they got it all messed up. But that doesn't mean in the quiet place of their heart, they haven't cried out to the Lord. And only God knows that. So I think the rapture is going to be a humongous harvest. And when you see the Georgia Guidestones say there's 500 million people, well, maybe they're right. Because I think in the quiet place, millions and billions of people cry out to Jesus and the rapture is going to be humongous. 
And the landscape of what Revelation talks about is not even close to what the world looks like today. It'll change in one blink of an eye. And that could happen in just a couple of days. So if you've never asked Jesus into your heart, you better do it because the clock is tickety, tickety, tickety talk. Now, hopefully I didn't, I don't have a spider crawling on me from walking into that spider web. Did you see that? I don't know if it, the camera caught it, but it was like thick cords too. It was like oh, I'm ripping through. It's kind of like what it is here in life. We're trying to understand. We're trying to make it through and we just got to rip through all the mud. So there's no way I know everything either. It's all by grace and favor and mercy from Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Have a great Christmas day. Merry Christmas. One more day until the rapture. Merry Christmas. <laughs>